a more a more clear expression of the one that talks about eternal life is John 16. Um, John 3 16 rather that says that because well, this is eternal life that yeah, God gave his only begotten son. Jesus yeah. has come, anyone who chooses to believe in him shall be saved. Question is what Jesus do we believe in? That's the golden question. Now, what I mentioned to you today, where your colleagues have gone to that center, Excel Center, just at this very moment in time, the Jehovah's Witnesses are there. And then the evangelicals take over and have their say. So the question, they've got their own representation on who Christ is. They call themselves Christians. You reject that. They reject you. So the question now, my friend, is who is Christ? So what I would say to you, listen carefully, what I would hasten for you to understand let the man speak for himself in the bible okay so what i say to you as a muslim as you can see very clearly what we say what we therefore say is he speaks of himself as a messenger of god mark chapter 6 verse 4 matthew chapter 21 verse 11 john chapter 17 verse 3 gospel of luke gospel of john accentuate the point that he's claiming to be a messenger of God, a prophet. There's no claim that he makes that would give him the title of being God in any way, shape or form, which is what you believe on for, which as far as we're concerned, as you are aware, okay. would be deemed as a blasphemy. However, we, as you know as well, I'm assuming, we hold Christ in a great position, a mighty messenger, a great prophet, one loved by God, one close to God, one who will return at the end times, one who will establish peace and justice. Hallelujah to Jesus. However, what we're saying to you though, understand who the man was himself. In Mark 10, 17, a rich young man comes up to Jesus. What does he say to him? Good teacher, what must I do to get eternal life? Jesus says, why do you call me good? There is nobody good except for only God alone. Okay, and why did he do that? To tell the people, to them understand that God is the only one worthy of praise. Of Hence, by proxy, the, def the definition of this chapter in Mark 10, 17, he cannot therefore be God, you see. He's given equivocation of goodness exclusively to God and then saying to the individual, why are you calling me God? Only good. Only God is good alone. Hence, only God can be good. And only you, therefore... Do you remember the verse where he had said that I am the only way? He doesn't say that. John chapter 14, verse 6. Yeah, what he does he say? He says, I am the, he doesn't say only, but he says, I am the way, the life and the truth. No man come to the Father except through me. Okay, well, I accept this. So on that same premise, he had yeah. said that no man goes to the Father except. Yes. So that exception puts him as the only. Not, it doesn't necessitate that. The reason why, listen carefully, read the context. John chapter 14, read the verse one. What, is, what does he say in verse one? In my father's house, in my father's mansion, there are many uh, rooms. Many, yeah, many, yes. Yeah, so what he's trying to show to those Jews, I have been sent to you, it's incumbent upon you therefore, to follow my way. The way you people are leading your religious um, uh, temple and your religious actions, is contrary. So you have to follow my way because I've been designated. Okay. Let, me, let, me, let, me, let me just explain to you, because what, what, so what I did, Paul, Paul, what I will explain to you, according to the context, will make rational sense. It's not something I'm making up, which is what you call far-fetched. I'm not fetching it from the sky. It makes sense, the explanation. So he is explaining, I am the way, follow my way. Your way is wrong. Follow my life, the life so example. His so his way was to go to God. Look, what does he say? I am the way, the life. He doesn't say, I am the destination. He is the conduit between God and mankind. Why did you think he said that? Because he represents God. Okay, but don't you think that more than just a representation of God is also the image no, 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 of No, not a representation. Of God, a, a rep the Bible has said that God who so many times and past times has spoken through prophets and our fathers. Yes. And in these last days spoken to us by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Yes, which then... And so, that means yes. that in time past... That's Hebrews chapter 1. We have had many other people, but in this time since the coming of Christ... Which, what does that... So what does that so what does that tell you? In, when he spoke through prophets in the old times in the old testament, that means at that time Christ wasn't there. But now he speaks through his son Jesus. Exactly. But, but if you remember, there was a scripture when he was talking to the Jews and he said, Before Abraham was I am, I am. John chapter eight. Yes, existed, only nobody knew. I'll, I'll explain physically just because he wanted to bring man to God. There was a reconciliation to do. 
That's why he's the content. That's why he says he's the way. Okay, but let me... yet, he's saying he's the only way. Let me explain. Let me explain. No man can reach God except him because he is God. Yeah. Because he has also said that. But I that's something you. Yeah. God. That's John 10:30. Mm -hmm. Let me explain to you. You've, you've touched on a few verses. It's incumbent upon you, Paul, as an intelligent young man, to understand what do these passages mean according to their context, my brother. Simple. Just all you've got to read is the context, and the context will tell you what does Jesus mean when he says the Father and I are one. John chapter 10, verse 23. Jesus is walking in the colonnade of the Temple of Solomon. The Jews come up to him and say to him, if you are indeed the Messiah, tell us plainly. Christ says to them, I've already told you so, yet you are not of my sheep. Those who are my sheep, they follow my way. For God who has... So what he's saying in the verses leading up to when he says the Father and I are one, we, God has sent me as his representative. Therefore, it's incumbent upon you to follow my example. So therefore, when you follow my example, that is how you get to God. And that is when he says the Father and I are one, meaning one in purpose, bringing you people who have gone off the path. Okay, I get that expression. But then, yeah. how do you explain yeah. where John 3, 16 has said, John 3, 18 particularly has said, yeah. that anyone who doesn't believe is condemned already. Who believe, believe in what though? On Jesus. As what? As the Savior. Yes, because we accept. Whoa, whoa, I, I'll stop you there. See, now see. Life. But listen, my friend, believe, the question is believing. I agree. Listen, what you said, I agree. I'm not disputing that. What I'm telling you, though, is believe in Jesus as what? Exactly the point. That, no, listen to my Paul, Paul, you're an intelligent man. You've just said to me, listen, listen to your words care and reflect what I'm saying to reflect what you're saying. Paul, you said to me that the one who believes in Jesus Christ, and we believe in Jesus Christ as Muslims. We, uh, we love him. We, uh, he's the Christ, the Messiah, born of the virgin birth, will come at the end times, loved by God, representative of God, a messenger, a prophet, a mighty man of deed, power, mercy. However, he did not claim to be God. This is the central issue here. So what I've tried to show to you in John 10, 30, when he makes this exclamation, the Father and I are one, all he's trying to show is that we are one in purpose of bringing you Jews who have transgressed back to the correct path of God. So in that context, he means it. The Greek word there is called hen. It's the same word in John 10, where he says, Father and I are one. It's the same word used in John chapter 17, verse 21 to 23. Where he says to the disciples, you can become one with me and I can become one with you. So it doesn't literally mean that the disciples are God. Well, I, so, do you do you I want you to reflect, Paul. I don't want you to say, no, yeah, yeah. I, I you because yeah. you said, basically, you believe in Jesus. I know Muslims believe in Jesus. But as you said, as what? Pardon? I said, I know Muslims believe in Jesus. But the question you asked me is, yeah. as what? As what? Yes, that's, that's the, that's the this is what we're, we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're we believe. So you we're trying to help you. Yes, which is, what, which is what I'm trying to deliberate with you by telling you, Paul, this is what he says of himself. Yeah, this is what I want you to reflect. That's, that's what you said. Said, yes. But that was not only what he said, because if you, if you look at other places in the scripture... Okay, go on, give me another citation. Before Jesus had come at all, yes. Isaiah prophesied yep. that there will be someone who will be born, yep. who is going to save the world, deliver the world from sin. Even which which, which verse Jesus, are you referring to? Be when, specific. When, when Jesus, when Isaiah was quoted and said, um, the, 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 he's going to, um, sorry, of one he was saying that he's the mighty God, the wonderful one. Isaiah chapter yeah. 9, verse 6. Let me explain yeah. to you. Let me explain. That cannot be in reference to Jesus. Because okay, Jesus, because Jesus is not the Father, according to your belief. Listen, Paul. Okay. Paul, listen carefully. Okay. Because you're going to be duped here. Listen. According to your belief, Jesus is not the Father. So when he's called everlasting father. So you what Jesus is your belief? Is Pardon? Jesus. According to my belief, he is the Father. Are you a one that's Pentecostal? Well, if that's what they call it, I don't know what they call it. That's what they call what it. Believe, you're, you're not, are you a Trinitarian? Do you believe that there are three distinct people? No, I believe in, that Jesus is God and the Holy Spirit is God. They are all one person. Okay, one person. Okay. But, you're, but, you're, but what you're saying, according to your belief, they are distinct people. So the Father is not the Son. The Son is not the... No, let me explain. they are not distinct. They are expressions of the same person. Yes. But you still, but they're expressions of the same singular being. Yeah. However, your belief is that they are three in nature. Not in nature. In what? In expression. 
Okay, because fine. It's one singular man, one singular God, one singular spirit. God yes. is a spirit. Yeah. Yet he came as a man. Yes. Yet he was in heaven as a father. Yeah. And he exists all the one at once. That's why Jesus said that before Abraham was, I am. How could that be? Because it's not possible if he has if he has not existed before time and yeah. come again. Because if if so have okay, said I was, he existed before but not anymore. But if he says I am, it means he always existed. And yet exist and will continue to exist. But does it make sense? You just quoted earlier from Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2, where you said that in the beginning God chose his prophets as representation. But in these times, yeah. in the end times, he's choosing Jesus Christ, which tells us he it's wasn't there. Choice. That's a that's he's a contradiction. Himself. Uh, yes, exactly. Yes. So what we say is that because Jesus represents listen carefully, um, um, Paul, because Jesus represents God. For example, you know in many cultures, I'm assuming you're from Africa originally, in many cultures, if you go to a funeral of a family, people you know, if you go, it's as if your whole family is gone. If just say your father cannot go for whatever reason, and you've got good contact, you going is representation of your father. That doesn't make you your father, you see. So in that sense, Jesus Christ, upon whom be peace, is one who represents God as a messenger. Yeah, it's easy to understand. Look. It makes sense. That makes sense. Thank you. But so let me, let me explain to you. Even, so even some. Where Jesus the, had said um, where he was preaching, and some men let down the leper, the man who was paralyzed. And they said, um, I see the fate of this man. Um, I'm going to make him whole. And he said, The sins are forgiven. And he saw the expression. He saw the Matthew, expression of those men. Matthew chapter 9. Said, Let me explain. Which one is other to do? To <laughs> make this man whole, but to say unto him, Listen, Paul, 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 listen to me, my friend. Hold on to what you're saying tightly here. You don't even know which verse you've quoted, but I'll tell you what you quoted. It's you quoted, no, hang on, one moment. These are your scriptures. You quoted Matthew chapter 9, verse 3. Yeah. Let me, listen, you're an intelligent guy. You know, did you, have you heard of a musician called Bob Marley, who died many years ago, reggae music? He once said the following, you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all of the people all of the time. Now, let me explain to you what, what I mean by that. In reference to Matthew, this is going to really open your eyes. Check this out. I know by heart, but I'm going to show it to you so that you know what I'm talking about. And I'm quoting here from the CEV version. Matthew, because you're the one who raised this. Can you read the NKJ? This is your Bible. I'm not making it up. I don't know what the CEV is. It's contemporary English version. Okay, you can read that. Now, follow this carefully. I know it all by heart, but what I'd like to do is share it with you. And I want you, Paul, to reflect. Be honest and reflect. That's all I ask. Okay. Listen, my friend. Jesus got into a boat and crossed back over to the town where he lived. Some people soon brought to him a man lying on a mat because he could not walk. When Jesus saw how much faith they had, he said to the man, my friend, don't worry, your sins are forgiven. So, look, listen, 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 look, 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 look. Some teachers of the law of Moses said to themselves, Jesus must think he is God. Look at Jesus' response to this question. But Jesus knew what was in their minds. And he said to them, why are you thinking such evil thoughts? That you thinking that I am God is an evil thought. Consider that first of all. Is it easier for me to tell this man his sins are forgiven or to tell him to get up and walk? But I will show you that the Son of Man has the right to forgive sins here on earth. Yeah. So Jesus said to the man, get up, pick up your mat and go on home. The man got up and went home. Look, now look at this as well, Paul, you're an intelligent guy. When the crowd saw this, they were afraid and praised God for giving man such authority to people. So, okay. So this is the story so far. Okay, so let's 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 go to the same scripture. Actually, that's, that is the scripture. Yeah. So where he had said, um, Jesus knew what was in their minds. How was that so? Because this was a power that was bestowed upon to him in Acts chapter two, verse twenty-two, and it says, Jesus Christ, a, a man appointed by God. 
so God designated as an apprentice who worked many wonders, miracles and signs that God did through him. So God is like, for example, let me ask you a question. Who parted the sea? Moses or God? Moses. But through the power, same thing with Jesus. Yeah, the expression of the miracles, that's true. Okay. Because he was a mortal man. He came as a mortal man. Yet, he was God at once. But it says in 1 Timothy because that... then the question would be, how would he be buried and raised again third day and ascend into heaven if he was not God? No mere man can do that. Well, so I mean, there are other, other people in the Old Testament who have been ascended to heaven without having died, like Elijah well, as well. I'll prove to you that nobody has ever but, gone to heaven. Okay, but just before we go, because we're hitting many times, you, you mentioned John 8.58, I haven't had a chance to speak to you about that. You mentioned John chapter 10, verse 30. Now, the one I want to really make you believe. Okay. I want you, Paul, to open your eyes, my brother, and listen carefully what I'm saying to you. Please, okay. don't let, you know, foolishness overtake you. In this scripture, I've told you, Let's, let's summarize it. You know the Bible, so let me summarize it. So Christ forgives the sins of that individual. The Jews are watching. They're thinking, the man is forgiving sins. He must think he's God. Jesus, who observes their thoughts, says to them, why are you thinking such evil things? Meaning you thinking that I am God is an evil thought. That is what my friend the passage is saying to you. I get that expression, okay. but that was not what it meant. So, okay, what did he mean? Okay, go on. What he meant is, why would they be thinking that it was not God? Because it's the... Wait, 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 stop you. <laughs> wait, wait, he has told his disciples, because his disciples are asking, show us the Father and it sufficient us. And he said, have I been with you so long that you do not know the Father? Because he's telling them that when you see me, we see the father, see the John father. 14, 9. I'll explain that to you. Yeah, if you want, if you so want to hear my explanation. These guys were asking again, that does he think he's, he's God? That's an evil thought, because that's God right before you. So you think no, but that's not, he's not God, he's just saying otherwise. Okay, let me explain that to you. Now listen, my friend. You quoted John 14, 9. He that has seen me has seen the father. If you carry on reading, it says in, my, in the words that I speak. Because in John chapter 5, in chapter 5 verse 37, and in 1 John chapter 4 verse 12, it says God cannot be seen at any time. But yet you see. God has not been seen Pardon? at any time. So, says, no yeah. man has seen God. At exactly. Any time, except so, the one who has come from him, but, which is Jesus Christ. Yeah, no, he doesn't say seen God. He hasn't seen. He, he says. That, that's, that's the no, we see we're jumping, we're jumping from too many places. We need to focus singularly. No, this, these scriptures do not exist in themselves. No, but what I'm saying to you, Paul, listen, my friend, we're, we're jumping. What we need to do. We need to establish point by point first. Okay. You said to me, no, that when he says that, why do you think such evil thoughts after the Jews think he's God? To that response, he's saying, why are you thinking such evil thoughts that I am claiming to be God? It's that which he's taken the exception to. It's that, listen to the, the passage, it's self-explanatory. You then said, no, he's not saying that um, it's not God, he's, he's not God. And then you gave a reference to John 14, 9 to substantiate your point. But in John 14, 9, because in the classical Trinitarian belief, Jesus is referred to as one part of the Godhead. Okay, but unfortunately in that verse, it says that he that's seen me has seen the Father, but you cannot see the Father at any time. John 5, 37, 1 John chapter 4, verse 12, yet you are seeing Jesus. So hence, Jesus cannot be God. It's simple logic. It's well, logical. That's why I explained to you that the, uh, um, uh, the scripture you are trying to quote, when quoted right, says that no man, no man, no mortal man, I have never seen God before, but I believed him and I was saved. So he's saying that no man at, at any point seen God, but he who has come from him. So he, why I was corroborating those scriptures was because the Hebrews uh, read earlier, that said, um, God at the sundry time and Dabas man has spoken through prophets and their fathers. Yes. At these last days, spoken by Jesus, who is the express image of God the no, Father. No, that's, you're referring to, um, is it, the word, the Greek word is called icon. Icon means an outward expression of God's character. It doesn't mean a literal image, because it says in the Old Testament, of that Lord make no image. Of God, you can make no image. Okay, Let me, well then, uh, but in the image, where he has said, let's make man in our image. Okay, that's in reference to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, which says, 
that the word therefore let us make man in our image the hebrew word for man is adam and adam it said let us make Ad so you don't believe adam is god do you because if it says exactly but it said let us make man which is in hebrew is called adam man in hebrew is adam well, what do you think no, but what i'm saying to you but you don't was the creation physically of man that i wanted to do Pardon? Do you think that was all God had in mind at that time? What do you say? Say that again. Say that again. When he said, let's make man, yes. our image and yes. likeness. Yes. Do you think he was talking about the form of a man that is wearing a jacket? That yes. was the image he was talking about. Yeah, it's not talking about. It means God shares some of his um, uh, uh, like um, attributes. Like God can become angry. We can become angry. God can be happy with our actions. We can show happiness. But we have a different way of doing it. Our understanding of how God Ex is expressing himself is different from ours but God gives us a, a, like a metaphorical language so we can understand but it's not that similar because uh, listen so when it says in that verse in John in, in, in this particular passage when it says um, uh, let us make man all he's referring to is let us make Adam in our image but you don't believe I'm repeating myself again but you don't believe Adam is God even though it says yes because God created him it can't be what created you, right? But God created Jesus as well. It was the creation of God. What, it, I'll prove it in 1 Colossians chapter 15. It says that. What did it say? Yeah, you should not be... Yeah. yeah. And yeah, yeah and that... You are referring to it, so I'll explain to you. Yeah, explain to me. That's so fantastic. I'm going to, I'm going to go to 1 Colossians yeah. chapter 15. That he is the but firstborn I'm, I'm of creation. Back, Listen. I'm going, to come back yeah. to, I'm going to come back to that. Which one? Because Which one you want to come back to? Genesis 1 26. Yeah, yeah. Check out the Hebrew word. You need to know this as well. You may not be aware of this. Hey, usually, I have the lexicon I open yeah. to check the Greek meaning of it. But, but yeah, it's not on this phone. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, you can still. No, you can still. You can go on to the Hebrew interlinear, what Genesis one twenty six. This, this. No, but what I'm saying to you, my friend Paul, yeah. you can still. You don't need to have it on your phone. You just yeah. do a Google. Are you on Google? Yeah. Yeah. So all you gotta do is go on to the Hebrew interlinear of Genesis one twenty six, and it will tell you the word there for uh, um, man is Adam. So let's yeah, make it yeah. I'm not doubting that. I know that. Okay, but yeah, but what I'm saying, Adam but why am I emphasizing this point? Because you said earlier yeah. that Jesus is the image of God, and then I said to you the same thing applies to Je to Adam, same principle. Yet you do not accept Adam as being God. And I was going to explain to you why not. Because that then you said he was creation. Then you then you said to me afterwards yeah, that's he's one of, that's one yeah. Of the points, but okay. That's one of the main points. But still, with Jesus, it says in one close in chapter fifteen, Jesus is the firstborn of creation. So firstborn there didn't mean your first daughter or your first son. It means prototype. Exactly. That's exactly so what... So it's like you have everything that is supposed to be a representation of him. So that's what was the case of Adam. That was what Adam was supposed to be. Adam was supposed to be an image of God, not just by mortal form, but by the expression of the life of God in Adam. Adam was supposed to have the spirit of God by obedience, by acceptance of salvation. But Adam did not receive salvation. That was well, Adam, Adam, had, Adam, yeah, Adam had a shortcoming, like yeah. in 2 Philippians but 5. But the shortcoming, do you see, was not the eating of the fruit. It was by disobedience. It's by not having faith. That is not having faith. It's just an, an, an error that he took. So how Paul expresses it in 2 Philippians 5 to 11, that, that um, Adam essentially, where Jesus was essentially, um, uh, where Adam failed, Jesus comes as the person who actually fulfills what Adam fell short should of. Yes, yeah, yeah. should have done in, 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 uh, in 2 Philippians 5 to 11. Yeah. So by that, and this, all he's saying is that this is where, he, but it also says in that passage that he was one who was exalted to God, meaning God raised Jesus to himself. Meaning to say, there was a time where Jesus did not have that particular position with God. Because if you are, for example, just say me, I, just say we work in a company, I'm a director, you're my manager. If I raise you to my position, that means you don't have that position by default. You are given it, you are given that position by me. So when God raises Jesus to his, to exalt him to himself, it's just to show to him that you are close to me, hence I, you represent me. That's all it shows. Okay, well that logic makes sense. Thank you. However, it's not what the Bible expressed. Okay, how, what, okay, go and explain. Because the Bible said that God who did not think it's to be equal with God. Yes, but how can you not, how can you not, how can you not um, equal robbery with God if you're already, that makes no sense. That you are, fit, you are saying he did not think equal robbery with God when he already is supposed to be God. 
That makes no sense at all, you see. And what is actually, what Christ is pouring himself out, is from Isaiah 53, when he's pouring his heart out from the cross. That's all he's doing. He's not trying to show that he's like co-equal with God in any way, shape or form. And when it says then, every, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord, but to the glory of God. So what you have to do is you express that Jesus is Lord. What does Lord mean in the Bible? Greek word, kurios, one who represents God as well. A master, kurios, when, when Adam is referred to as Lord to Sarah. You understand what I'm saying to you? Yeah, well, yeah. like we call men, what are men lords too? Yeah, but exactly. Then, yeah. Have you heard the expression in the Bible, Lord of Lords? Yes, Lord of Lords, yes. So and King of Kings. That's ascribed to? Yeah, so let me explain to you what Lord means. It means one of an exalted title, one who is like mentioned in Psalm 110, one. My Lord said to my Lord, sit on my right hand. So my Lord is Adonai, which is God Almighty, never used in the whole Bible for Jesus. But Christ in this context is referred to as Adonai. Not Adonai, I refer that to you once more. So it's Adonai, God said to my God. Because you know, you know the, Paul, you know the issue is, the Greek language has caused the confusion for the Christians. Do you know why? Words such as Lord, Kurios, Theos, you know Theos? Means God, it can be given to God Almighty, but it can also be given to ordinary people. Yeah, there was an expression of God for uh, ordinary No, but people. not the same word though. The thing is, for example, God's in today's language, yeah, but in the Greek, in the, as you know, for the world, in the, there is no capital letters. Yeah, but what I'm trying to say to you then, you see, this is the confusion it's called. Now, for example, as me and you speak today in this country, if I was to mention God, you would never think of me as God or you as God. We would never think like that. We would think of oh, the Almighty God. But in those days, it was common. The, the verbiage was common that a, a person, <coughs> excuse me, that a person of a higher disposition, he would be given these titles. That like even as you know. Not that I'm saying that Satan is like God, but in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, even Satan is referred to as the God of this world. So these were ubiquitously used titles. And hence this caused the confusion within, 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 um, within um, what you call um, the Christian because of these terminologies, which could be used for God, but at the same time, it could be used for man. Okay, yeah. so I get the logic and as it is, I can see that we both have um, enough, what's it called, to um, enough backup to express what you think. But then, this question I want to ask you is not so much of the text of scripture, but as your experience. Okay, so now, as it is, tomorrow we don't know, we are only in today. Um, what happens if for any reason we have run old and it's time to go? What is the faith that you have? What is the proof of the salvation? What's that assurance that you are going to be with? Allah. Yeah. What's, what's the assurance? Yeah, so we have mentioned in the Quran mentions that those who do works and righteous deeds, for them is a great reward in the hereafter. Yeah, that, okay. yeah. so that's like in James chapter 2, verse 14. What does it say? Faith without works is futile. Just like in James chapter 2, verse 24 as well. The, the incorporation of works is fundamental to the faith. It's no good having the faith. Yeah. So that is what we're saying that if you do good deeds, that for example, if you're going to kill someone and murder someone and rape someone, you're not expecting God to, to let you go, no justice. Just say you escape, God forbid, just say I or somebody else, let's put someone else, they rape some woman or they kill some man, okay, and they die. They've got no, re no recompense. So God, we're not, they're not going to expect to go to heaven for their evil acts, terrible acts. So what we then say as Muslims, it makes sense, you see, that a divine creator will want us to do good work. It's incumbent upon us. It says, yeah, Abraham, even Abraham says that. It's not for Abraham that good works were cast, but so even he was one who accentuated the good works which were essential for man. And I'll give you a quote there from James chapter 2, verse 14, which clearly states that faith without works is in vain. So it's incumbent for you to have both faith and then you've got to enact the works. That's the only way to attain the hereafter. And this is why Christ says, and I'll just summarize it very quickly for you. In John 17, 3, when Jesus says, for this is eternal life, meaning, obviously when we don't have eternal life in, in this world, it's for the hereafter. But it's the, the, the test is where our position will be for the hereafter in this life. So when he says, for this is eternal life, that they may know you. So people should know you as the only true God and whom you have sent, the messenger, Jesus Christ. The Greek word is apostelos. Apostelos means a messenger sent by God. 
So this is what this is the Islamic beauty for testification. Okay. Because we, we, what we're doing, Paul, we're letting the man speak for himself. Of course, but beyond the man is um, what's it called I also who is the messenger of the man. The man for me is not someone who is historic. It's someone who lives in me today, right now, as I speak to you. So I was going to ex explain to you my side of it. Yeah, no. So beyond this, as a believer, yes. my conviction, my assurance of salvation of eternity is Jesus. I do good deeds. I do all I can. I mean, I give, I do all that, but I mean, my assurance is not in all the goodness yeah. that I do. It is in Jesus. And this is why it's important. Remember the story of the man who was nailed beside Jesus on the cross while Jesus died. This man was a thief and while he was dying, he was nailed beside Jesus. And one was mocking Jesus saying, uh, he thought you are the savior, right? Save yourself. The other says, save me Lord. And he said to him, today he will be a paradise. And his soul was accepted. Not because he did anything good, he was a robber. But the other who didn't believe was not taken into paradise because he never believed. So more than what is belief, more important than belief is belief in Christ as what? As the Savior, as that thing believed. So I've tried to explain to you the term Lord and Savior. It simply means a person of an elevated title, a person of a high disposition who comes and saves his community. There are many other saviors and lords in the Bible. In Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 27, Moses is referred to as a savior. Judges chapter 2, verse 9. From what? The context. Yeah, the context, precisely. So even in this, even the context where you are saying Christ is referring to him, uh, was referred to, not that he refers to himself. Christ never says, I am your Lord and Savior. Rather, Christ, this, let me explain. Christ, Christ expressed himself as the savior. Yeah, so the all savior means is a person who saves his community. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. The but I was not in the community of Jesus. But no, but, yet no, but you're missing the point. No, but what we're saying to you, you see, this is what we're trying to explain to you. Let, let Jesus tell you how to save yourself. Look, look at the words. Look, so one would save oneself by attaining the eternal life. So one, we're going to have to probably take shelter in one moment. But one attains the eternal life by listening to what Christ says to gain that salvation. Look, for this is eternal life. So this is how you attain the salvation, by acknowledging God as the only true God, and I am your messenger. And hence, by proxy, you then will attain salvation in the hereafter. That's to, um, Quran. No, that's according to your John 17, 3. No, I'm trying to break it down so you understand, my friend. Look, look. No, the Jews had no problem believing in God. So there was no way I was telling them that they had to believe in God. Because they knew God, everybody knew God. The yeah. question was... What, what, what was that God that they knew? They believed in God, the Saviour, the Creator of the world. Yes. But they, didn't, they, but they didn't believe Jesus as God then, did they? They didn't believe Jesus at the time. That's why Jesus was telling them that that thought was evil. Because He is do, God. Do you, want, do you want to come into our little tent for us? Yeah. Very welcome, thank you. So, I'm just going can, to can we, can we offer the uh, Paul very nice uh, guy yeah, water or really something? Good, very nice guy. Do you want to give some water? We've got some water? Thank you. Anything? Yeah. It's going to be very good. Brother, we need to move. I'm going to get soap. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brother, we need to. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, I'm just going to keep this short. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Come here. To wrap up. So, what he had said basically was. Now, you guys know God. You guys know who God is. Yes. But more than God. So he say, where does he say you not? You want to come? You don't. You don't. You don't get wet. So basically, in the place where, in the place where, um, he was telling them that. Uh, let me see which one. Okay, let's use the same one we used. Where you had said. When you have said, um, why think you this evil thing, right? Sorry? Why you said, why think you this evil thing? Yes. That same place. So, the question you would ask, as, as you have said before, is what were they thinking? So, they were thinking that it was not good. That was yeah, no, but no, what they're thinking is that he's claiming to be God because he's forgiven sins. And to that thought of theirs, Jesus says, why are you thinking these evil things? Meaning, why are you thinking that I am God? 
that is what he says that you are thinking evil things. Yeah, okay. So that's what he said. But that's what no, not this, that's what the scripture said. No, because I've explained earlier that what he meant was what he meant was I am God. So why are you thinking the evil thing that I am not God? So basically they know that there is a God, but they didn't accept Jesus. Did you that's what I'm trying to say, Paul, my friend. You, you, yeah. This is something you're thinking in your brain is not there. You're saying no, contrary to what the passage is saying. Because corroborating you with other scriptures. I'm gonna come a bit but you don't get wet behind you. Corroborating you with other scriptures we have established before. Although we didn't accept, we didn't accept based on your explanation, but I have established before yeah. that basically he is God and he is the express image of God. So um, I get that you have contrary opinion about that, I respect that. But well basically what I've done so far has been to um, express the intention of God beyond beyond uh, knowing the scriptures and verses is the life. So standing here before you, I was once unsaved. I have parents who were from the Muslim family as well. Yeah. So I know the passion with which you talk. But out of the love of God through Jesus, it constrains me to talk. So you come from a Muslim family? Yeah, Your my, parents? My parents were Muslims. My parents' parents were Muslims, but my parents were born. So I have friends also, some classmates who are Muslims. So I don't have any issue with that. No, no, we've got no but issue. Just... When it comes to the afterlife, I I I, I find it creepy to keep the truth to myself. So I would rather tell the truth. Then if it's accepted, then go. If it's not accepted, I'll be praying for acceptance of the message because I know I am safe. But I want others to be as safe as I am. May God guide us all. May God guide us all. Nice speaking to you, Paul. Your life is speaking to you. Maybe you want to wait before you get so. So had a very nice conversation with our friend Paul over here. You know, may, may God guide us all, inshallah. Okay, you take it. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, so, yeah. so basically speaking, as you can see, we had, it's, it's raining very heavily here in Stratford at the moment. So alhamdulillah, we had to abort the conversation. But you can see the technical lines that the conversations go. Christians seem to be totally at paradox explaining their beliefs and when you tell them the reality of these verses then they become then they seem to go all over the place although he's a very very nice young man a very nice and enjoyable conversation may inshallah allah guide us all